the critically acclaimed DC Elseworlds graphic novel that won multiple awards, released in 1996, written by Mark Wade, with beautiful art by the one and only Alex Ross, this is... Kingdom Come. The book opens up with our main character, Pastor Norman McKay, meeting his old friend, Wesley Dodds, the original Sandman, who is slowly dying in the hospital. Wesley tells Norman that he's been seeing visions of the end of the world. And then, as Wesley dies, Norman reads from the Bible. And out of the window, we see, like, 20 super-powered people flying around the city. Cut to Norman walking down the street, remembering Wesley and how much Wesley disliked the massive increase of costume heroes and villains, and that he would always talk about the legends who shouldn't be forgotten. Then Norman walks inside of Planet Krypton. You know, kind of like Planet Hollywood, except like more fucked up because like the planet and all of its inhabitants died. But whatever, I, I hear that they have good spinach. Norman walks inside to find his server. Green Lantern! Then Norman looks upon the establishment and sees all the great memorabilia, like Green Arrow's boxing glove arrow, or Kal-El's shuttle, or the DC logo, or Batman's old costume, and hey look, there's the second bat plane, along with everyone's favorite heroes serving them food. Norman's like, nah, not today. And leaves. And as he's walking down the road, a big streak of, like, reddish-orange zooms past him, but, like, nobody really seems to, like, notice or care. Norman just, like, continues walking when a bus flies towards him, and all these metahumans just, like, battle in the middle of the city. Hey, can you guess this guy's name? That's right, it's Brian Azzarello. Norman narrates that the world Wesley left is filled with his heroes, children, and grandchildren, who are in the thousands. It's not really a battle of good and evil as much as it is just a fight. And no one can really stop them because they're super powered, so it just sort of happens. And Norman just sort of hopes that humanity's time has not run out. And everyone stops and they all look up at a giant news screen to see a report about something horrible that happened in Kansas. Later, at Norman's church, he preaches to his congregation, but is unable to finish, so then everybody leaves. Norman thinks about the visions Wesley told him about, and that his dreams are somehow the same. Then, a bright light shines on Norman's face, and the Spectre appears. The Spectre was a detective named Jim Corrigan, who died and became the Spirit of Vengeance. Except the this version of the Spirit of Vengeance, instead of like a sick, fiery Harley Davidson he rides around, he rides a unicycle that's kind of wet. The Spectre tells Norman that he needs to use him as an anchor to humanity so that he can properly judge those responsible for the upcoming apocalypse. Norman asks why he's the chosen one, and Spectre says, I was too late. Wesley Dodds has died. His power is passed unto you. Now your visions will guide us. We must both witness the events that will lead to Armageddon. Come with me. Then they appear in a massive field of wheat, and they see a man working on a barn. Norman whispers to the Spectre where they are, but Spectre assures him that they cannot be seen or heard. Not even by him. And it's revealed that the man is none other than Kal-El! He finishes working up and is carrying his tractor inside when Wonder Woman appears, and she says hello to Cal, and Cal asks why she's at the farm. She was hoping that he wasn't going to be here, and tells him that he can't live forever in solitude. Okay, so something you should know about Clark is that he's renounced his Earth name for Cal-El, and over the years, after a certain traumatic incident, he's been living alone, far away from mankind. Cal says that he has things to do and begins to walk away from Diana when she puts her hand out, and like, hits something invisible. And then it's revealed that the entire farm is nothing but a giant indoor chamber. Cal then tells her that it spooks the animals and he turns the sky back on, while Diana demands he listens to her. She tells Cal that he's out of control, but Cal says he tried to say that 10 years ago, but nobody fucking listened. And then he walks out the door, and into the Fortress of Solitude. Then Cal walks into a giant dark room and turns on thousands of newscasts, and holy shit, it's Daredevil! No, 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 not, not that daredevil. This daredevil is a mute who uses boomerangs. Anyway, Cal sees all these news feeds speaking of a tragedy and Magog. And finally, we learn what happened in Kansas. 
a battle occurred between the Justice Battalion and a very weak and withered parasite who begged for mercy. The Justice Battalion, led by Magog, the man responsible for Superman's reclusiveness, brutally beat Parasite until Parasite cut Captain Adam's arm, leading to the immediate deaths of close to a million people, the entire state of Kansas, and parts of Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri being rendered irradiated wastelands. And now that America's largest food population is destroyed, the world economy is now about to collapse in the face of a global famine. Diana pleads with Clark to come back and show their generation of heroes that they have to return and lead the charge. Hal just walks back into the farm and tells Diana to go back to Themyscira. Norman asks who Diana was referring to, and Spectre tells him that a decade prior, when Superman went into self-imposed exile, his fellow heroes either gave up or sort of like continued to do while they could for humanity. Such as Keystone City, protected by one human, a man who runs alone, neither seen nor heard, but his presence is always felt. He is the Flash, who is in this universe constantly moving and basically is the speed force. Also, like, this Flash is Wally West, although his suit is basically Jay Garrick's. And like, in the Pacific Northwest, there's Hawkman who's a literal Hawkman. In space, high above the blue earth, rests a green kingdom, overseen by its king, Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern who sits on his throne, waiting for any extraterrestrial threats. The Spectre tells Norman that the gods have left humanity, choosing instead to walk alone. Norman asks what became of Batman, and the Spectre shows him Gotham, an Art Deco police state under the control of the Batman, who uses giant Batbots to patrol the streets and rid it of crime. Spectre then takes Norman to a bridge, and Norman gets angry that the only people who could stop the new supers are sitting idly by. Then a battle between metahumans begins on the bridge and a nearby cable car full of civilians. And then... Someone shoots the cable of the cable car, causing it to plummet towards the river below. Then a blur races by the crowd of onlookers, and the metahumans are all stopped, and the falling cable car is picked up by a giant water spout and placed on the bridge. And the civilians free themselves, and the crowd points and looks up into the sky to see Superman has returned! Norman then looks up at Superman and thinks, he didn't turn his back on us. He returned, and... Dear God, Armageddon hasn't ended. It's just begun. Then Norman and the Spectre are sitting outside of time at the location of Norman's vision, the Statue of Liberty. The Americamando and his Minute Men prepare to kill immigrants when these, like, three robots named Red, White, and Blue attack them in the crowds of people. As Norman looks on in horror, the Justice League appear from the heavens and descend like angels. Superman disarms Americamando while the other members either, like, save civilians or fight the metahumans. In the Statue of Liberty's head, these, like, weird two called the Brain Trust are controlling the Americamando and the Minutemen to kill all the immigrants, but they're stopped by the Red Robin, Dick Grayson. Meanwhile, the Justice League continue to fight when the arm of the statue is shot off, but it's caught by Wonder Woman, and then Superman repairs it, and they all fly to the United Nations building. Superman stands in front of a crowd of reporters and says, In our absence, a new breed of metahumans has arisen. A vast phalanx of self-styled heroes, unwilling to preserve life or defend the defendless. We have returned to teach them the meaning of truth and justice. We will make things right again. And then a reporter asks about Magog, and Superman's like, Oh, and he like looks away, and Dan is like, we'll, we'll deal with Magog, don't worry about it, we're all good. And then they fly away. Cut to a destroyed Wayne Manor. Superman flies down and enters the Batcave and says, Bruce, I know you're here, you can't hide from me. And Bruce is like, Yeah, yeah, you sure know a lot about hiding. Don't you, Clark? Superman asks what happened to the manor, and Bruce reveals that after his identity was exposed, Bane and Two-Face happened to it. Also, one of the new metas named Genocide blew up Arkham Asylum, Blackgate, and Bella Reeve with everyone inside. Basically putting Batman out of the job. <laughs> Superman asks for Bruce to join the League, but Bruce says he's busy, and that due to the metahuman population booming and the public wanting their new heroes stronger and more ruthless, the way to defeat them requires finesse and careful planning, 
that Superman and the Justice League do not have. Superman asks if Bruce is sure he doesn't want to join, and Bruce is like, For a man who can hear clouds scrape together, you sure don't listen very well. You know, the only thing I wonder about your so-called solutions is if I'll be the first to be reformed. Goodbye, Clark. Then Superman leaves, and Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow, Dinah Lance, Black Canary, and Ted Kord, Blue Beetle, appear from the shadows. Ollie says that the League will do serious damage, and if they succeed, the world's doomed. And then Bruce says that they'll have to bring in their own team. Above Wayne Manor, Norman asks Spectre if Batman and Superman were ever friends, if they argue like they do. Then the Spectre shows Norman Batman and Superman in their heyday, and says that Superman remained tethered to humanity through his love, until her life was stolen. Then Norman asks about Wonder Woman, and Spectre says, Like Superman, a paradox. Of all Superman's lieutenants, it is she who bears watching most closely. Then time moves on as Norman and Spectre silently watch Superman's League slowly increase their numbers. Cut to an office. Vandal Savage strangles the receptionist while King of Spades watches. Then Lex Luthor walks out and brings them into a boardroom containing Lord Naga, aka Cobra, Ibn al Zufash, the heir to Raish al Ghul's League of Assassins empire. Selina Kyle, and Edward Nigma. Luther asks for a status report, and Ibn tells him that the medical attention and disaster relief for Kansas is delayed by weeks, and Luther's like, Splendid. Naga tells Luther that the Arkham and Bella Reeve survivors were re-outfitted and renamed, and are now about 8% of the superhero population. And then Nigma interrupts and is like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're impeding public service and arming metahumans? Doesn't that make the world worse? Why are we even called the Mankind Liberation Front? Luther tells Selina to keep Nigma quiet, and then King asks a similar question, and Luther tells them, Our objective is to heighten the tension between humans and metahumans, to show that humans have no choice but to reclaim the world. There will be a war, but in the end, mankind will once again rule the Earth. And then a man in a red coat carrying a tray comes in and gives Luther a nice shave. And Naga asks about Superman, and Luther yells, He will not touch me! He will not! I have the most marvelous anti-Superman plan! Then Norman asks who the man in red is, and Spectre reveals it's Billy Batson, a.k.a. Captain Marvel! Or Shazam, whichever whichever you prefer. Cut to a villain bar. Hey, look, there's Fat Old Lobo and Solomon Grundy and Rorschach. Wait, what? And the Creeper and Dead Man. They're all here. Anyway, Norman and the Spectre watch as the League enters, and Superman asks everyone to join and be heroes. And if they don't, they'll be dealt with. Then they leave. And as everyone is talking about what to do and whether or not they should join, Ollie appears and prepares his note cards for his sales pitch. Then Norman and Spectre continue to watch as the League conquers the metahumans, and Norman notes that with each rebellion, Superman grows more and more frustrated. While the League members begin to question why Superman, of all people, has still not found Magog. Then later in a destroyed town, Superman and Wonder Woman are talking, and Cal says, We're ending up with more captives than converts. What do we do with those who refuse to see the light? And then Wonder Woman tells him to follow her. Cut to Atlantis! Wonder Woman asks Arthur Curry if they will house the metahumans, but he says no, and they leave. Later, on the new Watchtower, Superman and Wonder Woman are alerted that Magog has been found. Cut to the barren wastes of Kansas. Magog is slowly trying to place down a building, but it crumbles, and he, like, gets angry and blows it up. Then Superman and the League show up, and Superman berates Magog about bringing six unstable metahumans to fight against one shitty villain, which ended up killing one million people. And Magog tells Superman to do something about it. I'm not afraid of you, Magog. Ah, get out of town. Oh, wait. You already did that. You know... You have a lot of nerve blaming me for something that was your fault. And then we finally learned what happened. The Joker apparently moved to Metropolis, and his latest plan was entering the Daily Planet and killing 92 men and one woman. Then, when Joker was being arrested, Magog just ran up from behind him and killed him with his staff. Magog was put on trial, but he got acquitted and became the new hero of Metropolis. Back in Kansas, Magog says... When you left, I always thought that you were afraid that I was the man of tomorrow. But you were afraid of the future I represented. 
Well, look around you. This is what I represent. Superman says, You must be so proud. Which enrages Magog, causing him to blast Superman with his staff, doing nothing, before falling to his knees and saying, The world changed. But you wouldn't. So they chose me. They chose the man who would kill over the one who wouldn't. And now they're all dead. Lock me up. Punish me. Kill me. Just make the ghosts go away. Diana puts her hand on Cal's shoulder, but then he says, We are at war. Cut to Apocalypse. The ruler of the Grand Planet stands overlooking his fiery kingdom. Superman walks up behind him and it's revealed that the Lord of Apocalypse is actually Orion. Orion tells Superman to send the rogue metahumans to Apocalypse, but Superman says that deportation is not his intent. Then he leaves and finds Scott Free and Big Barda. Scott and Barda agree to help Superman with his super prison, with Scott, a master escape artist, designing it and Barda being the head of the security force. And thus, the prison is constructed in the fields of Kansas. Cut to Luther's office. Bruce Wayne and his silent cavalry show up. Bruce tells Luther that they've begun construction on the Gulag, and then they shake hands. And eventually the Gulag is built, and it's basically the Legion of Doom headquarters. Except, there's one problem. Even though the prison is huge, and was meant to hold prisoners for months to come, after two weeks, it was filled beyond capacity. Norman asks about Captain Marvel, and Spectre tells him that Billy's role in the war is a mystery. Then they appear in a black void, where Norman watches as Spectre, Ganthet, Highfather, the Phantom, Stranger, the Wizard, Shazam, and Zeus discuss Billy Batson and humanity itself. But then, Deadman shows up next to Norman, and Deadman tells him that he's just like sort of hanging around the ethereal plains, just chilling, and Norman asks Deadman if Spectre is an actual angel, and Deadman says, Oh, absolutely. An angel of death. And Deadman basically tells Norman that Spectre's gotten really weird recently, and he's basically lost his connection to humanity, and then he flies away. Cut to Billy Batson being brainwashed by Lex Luthor to hate superhumans. Luthor pulls a little worm out of Billy's ear, walks over to a large container, and then Luthor grabs another worm and places it back in Billy's ear as Billy weakly tries to say Shazam, all while a bat watches them from the shadows. Later, Bruce is led into Luther's situation room. Green Arrow asks why they don't just drop a K-bomb on Superman, and Luther tells him that Kryptonite just doesn't have the same effect it once did. Then, all like the Super Children and other heroes who sided with Batman are revealed, like the new Kid Flash, Rogue if she was Green Lantern, and Nightstar, who is the daughter of Dick Grayson and Starfire. Real original name. Then Bruce walks over to a nervous man in an overcoat, and Norman asks who the man is, and Spectre reveals that the man is actually Martian Manhunter. John tries to read Luther's mind, but he just starts freaking out and he can't. And Bruce calms him down and says that John deserves to go home and rest. Meanwhile, Billy sort of like walks around the room and makes all the heroes uncomfortable. Up on the watchtower, Superman stares at the Earth, checking metahuman activity while Red Robin and the some others discuss the Gulag. Meanwhile, Norman watches the leaguers talk when the Flash, who is basically outside of time, is like, hey, uh, what is that over there? Is that an old man? And then he pulls Norman out of the spirit world or whatever and into the watchtower. Power Woman grabs him and is about to beat the shit out of him while she demands to know who he is, but Superman comes up. All the leaguers stare at Norman as he says that the end of the world is coming and he needs to warn Superman. Superman says that Norman's words are meaningless and Armageddon is nowhere near, but he's interrupted by Red Robin telling them that there's a riot at the Gulag. Wonder Woman starts ordering the leaguers and everyone to move into like their battle stations or whatever, and then Superman turns around to find that Norman is gone. Cut to Luther's boardroom. The Mankind Liberation Front and Batman's Silent Cavalry sort of stand around when Luther barges in and alerts them that the prisoners are revolting. Then Luther reveals that Billy is his secret weapon, and Luther orders Captain Marvel to demolish the Gulag. Then Bruce punches Billy in the goddamn face, and Ollie's like, Are you serious? This whole time? It's just been Billy? I thought it was fucking Captain Marvel. It's just Billy. What have we been scared of? Bruce says that as Billy grew up, Luther kept him in check and turned Billy into like a stew of schizophrenic psychosis. Luther's like, but, but our goals. 
And Bruce reveals he only joined with Luther to learn what his connection with Captain Marvel was. You see, Billy is a wild card, and if there's one fucking thing Batman hates, it's a wild cards. Then the Silent Cavalry subdue the Mankind Liberation Front as Ted chases after Luther, and Bruce chases Billy through Luther's lab. Bruce tries desperately to get through to Billy, as Billy's just freaking the fuck out. But unfortunately, he runs into a giant tub of the worms, and they get all over him, and Bruce is like, Oh shit. Billy, Billy, you need to stay calm. I can talk you through this, just keep calm. But then, Billy shouts, Shazam! And escapes the building. At the watchtower, Norman and Spectre watch as Wonder Woman prepares for battle. And like Superman cuts his thumb on Diana's magic sword, and he says that he will not sanction lethal force. But Wonder Woman says, yeah, well, not all of us have heat vision. Superman yells that the heroes don't cross that line, and Diana retorts that the prisoners do. Then, Green Lantern comes through on whatever communication device it is, it's probably his lantern, and warns them that the Gulag fight is much worse than expected, and the walls are barely holding. Also, they killed the warden, Captain Comet. Diana asks how they handle this, and Cal says that he doesn't know. Diana proposes an ultimatum. The prisoners surrender, or it's war. Cal says there can't be a war without people dying, and then Diana kisses him and the League sets out for the Gulag. Then Superman flies into the Batcave and asks Bruce for his help. And Bruce is like, we've been over this. But Cal yells, I don't have time for your holier-than-thou cracks. We're racing the end of the world. I've got a half-second lead, but it's not enough. Bruce says that maybe a war is for the best, but Cal tells him that the taking of a life goes against what they both believe in. Then Bruce tells Superman that the brainwashed Captain Marvel is heading to the Gulag to destroy it. And he, like, turns around, and Superman is gone. And Bruce is like, so that's what it feels like. So, Superman races across the sky as fast as he can towards Kansas. Cut to the Gulag. The League, led by Wonder Woman, stands outside the walls as she gives the prisoners the ultimatum. Then, lightning strikes the dome of the prison, unleashing the hordes inside. As Superman is flying, he's knocked out of the air by Captain Marvel, and Norman finally realizes that Armageddon has arrived. Superhumans fight to the death as the Gulag crumbles and burns in the Kansas wasteland. Norman begs the Spectre to make it stop, but Spectre says that he cannot. Not yet. Cut to the UN. The Speaker sanctions the use of three nuclear bombs to be used on the Gulag. And the Speaker continues by saying that the only way to ensure future generations remember this event, is to make sure there will be future generations. Then he walks to his office and sits in silence as Norman and the Spectre watch him. Then, as the Battle of the Gulag continues, the Silent Cavalry arrive, and Diana kills this, like, Yugoslavian villain named Von Bach, causing all the prisoners to attack her and Bruce. Diana says that Bruce's people are out of their league, and Bruce is like, Why? Because we're saving lives rather than taking them. Diana says that the League is just forcing peace, and Batman's like, Ah, uh, yes. Force peace. The Amazon tenet. I heard rumors that the Amazons banished you. Face the truth, Diana. You won't win back your royalty by overcompensating. Then Diana grabs Bruce and flies him into the sky as the battle rages on. And they get above the clouds to see three jets flying towards the Gulag equipped with nuclear bombs. Meanwhile, Superman and Captain Marvel continue to fight until Marvel shazams Superman with lightning over and over and over. Back in the sky, Batman and Wonder Woman take out two of the jets, but the third slips by. Marvel keeps Shazam and Superman, but as he's about to do it again, Cal pulls him forward and covers his mouth, turning Captain Marvel back into Billy Batson. But then, Cal hears the whistling of the bomb, and he looks up and sees it falling towards him. The Spectre says, It is time. Norman asks what he means, and Spectre says, Judgment Day has come, Norman McKay. But, but the bomb! Will determine the fate of the world. If it drops, the superhumans will die, but humanity will be spared. If not, they will swallow the Earth. Either way, we face genocide, and I must punish those responsible. Who shall be held accountable, Norman? Judge. Norman watches in horror as Superman says he doesn't know what to do, but then Cal says, Listen to me, Billy. Look around us. There's a bomb falling. Either it kills us, or we run rampant across the globe. I can stop the bomb, Bill. But what I don't know is whether I should be allowed to. 
I'm not a man. But you, Billy, you're both. Fight the brainwashing, Billy. You can let me go, or you can stop me. You decide. Decide for the world. Then Superman flies into the sky to stop the bomb, and Billy looks up after him and quietly says, Shazam. And then lightning strikes down and Captain Marvel emerges from the dust as he flies after Superman and grabs him by the ankle, pulling him back down to the earth as he continues up to the heavens. Billy gets to the bomb and grabs on tight to it and yells, Shazam! 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 And Billy sacrifices himself by detonating the bomb before it gets to the ground. Norman stands up in the dust and smoky battlefield and the specter says, Judgment. And points to Superman, who sits on his knees, screaming into the sky, in the middle of hundreds of thousands of dead superhumans. Superman stands up, eyes glowing red, and flies away. Norman asks where he's going, and Spectre tells him that he'll probably confront his human attackers. And then Spectre says, There are survivors, although very few. Their war is over. Judgment has passed them. I'm no longer needed. Farewell, Norman McKay. And Norman yells, You think you brought me all this way to watch people die? You want to confront evil? Get us the hell to the UN now. At the UN, the people panic as Superman is literally bringing the roof down. And Norman begs the Spectre to let him talk to Superman. So Norman says, Clark, don't. You blame yourself for Captain Marvel? For Magog, for Kansas, for those ten years, you're angry. But in that anger, you're forgetting what humans feel. What they fear. They won't forgive you, or this Clark. Forgive yourself. Clark releases his grip on the ceiling and asks why Norman's there, and Norman says, I'm here to bear witness. Listen to me, Clark. Of all your powers, the greatest has always been your instinctive knowledge of right or wrong. You focus too much on the super and not enough on the man. Make this next decision as a man and make it right. Clark flies down and sees the survivors and Diana asks what happens next. Clark says, we put things right. We saw heroes as gods, but we were wrong. We need to care about coping with tomorrow. We're going to solve the problems with you, the people, not by rolling above you. We will earn humanity's trust. Then Clark ties Captain Marvel's cape to a flagpole outside the UN, and Norman and the Spectre walk off. Sometime later, Wayne Manor has been converted into a hospital, with members of the Mankind Liberation Front being sort of used as slaves. Like, they have collars on that'll, like, probably blow up or some shit, or electrocute them if they don't do it. Diana's exile is ended, and the surviving superhumans are taken to Themyscira for rehab. Alan Scott once again goes back to being an active Green Lantern, even holding position of ambassador of Nuoa at the UN. And in Kansas, Clark creates a massive cemetery to remember those who lost their lives. Diana shows up with a gift, and Clark opens a little box and finds his old glasses, which he gladly puts on before kissing Diana and getting to work on restoring the Midwest farms. And watching it all is Norman McKay and the Spectre. Norman asks the Spectre who will be held responsible, and Spectre says that no one needs to suffer any further. Norman says, When we first met, you said you needed a human soul to be your anchor. But, but you, you were a human. What would his perspective have been? Then, Jim Corrigan takes off his hood and thanks Norman. And suddenly, Norman is back at his church. Later, whilst Norman is preaching to his congregation, he sees Jim sitting in the front row of the pews. One year later, Clark and Diana are at Planet Krypton, and they're seated, and then Bruce shows up, and they get some drinks, and Bruce is like, Why, of all the places, would you choose to meet here? Diana says that she was curious about it and thought it might be humbling for them. Which immediately proves to be true when a man asks Bruce if he could pass the ketchup. Then they toast and Robin takes their orders. Diana orders a giant turtle soup, Clark orders Starro, the casserole, and Bruce orders a well-done steak. They get their food and Bruce asks why they really met here. Diana says that they have something to announce and Bruce is like, 
Oh, this? Yeah, yeah, I know. You're pregnant. Congratulations. <laughs> and, like, Diana and Clark are just like, oh, what? And Bruce lists off the reasons how he figured it out, and Diana says that Bruce will be the kid's godfather. And Bruce is like, uh, you, 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 you sure? Like, I mean, you can... Our schools of philosophy are totally different. I use fear, Clark uses hope, or something. I don't give a shit about what he uses, really. But are you sure? And Clark says that he trusts Bruce. He always has. And then they hug. And as they leave, Bruce notices two men sitting at the bar, looking at their menus. And one man says, Spinach and cottage cheese? That's the specter platter? Really? And Norman says, Hey, it's flattering to be remembered somehow. Then, Bruce, Diana, and Clark walk out the door. The end.